In this example, we have two point loads acting on the beam. We have a 12.5 kilonewton point load acting at a distance of 1.5 meters from support A. We have a second point load of 6.8 kilonewtons acting at a distance of half a meter from support B. But we also have a uniform distributed load that is distributed between the two point loads and has a length of 3.5 meters. So the distance between the two point loads is 3.5 meters and we have a UDL that spans that gap. Now it specifies here that the UDL applies a force of 5 kilonewtons per meter. Now the important thing here is that each meter of that UDL weighs 5 kilonewtons. So we have 1 meter weighing 5 kilonewtons. We have a second meter weighing 5 kilonewtons. A third meter weighing 5 kilonewtons plus an additional half a meter. Now the reason I represent it in this way is hopefully you can see that the total weight there is going to be 5 kilonewtons plus 5 which is 10 plus 5 which is 15 plus an additional 2.5 for the half a metre. So 17.5 kilonewtons. But the calculation that we would do here is we would do the weight of the UDL equals 5 kilonewtons per metre times the number of metres. And that gives us 17.5 kilonewtons. Note that it's no longer kilonewtons per metre because we've multiplied out the weight per metre by the length or the force per metre times the length. Now what we need to do, whenever we see a beam with a UDL and we need to calculate support reactions, essentially what we need to do is we need to imagine that we're removing the UDL and when we remove the UDL we're going to replace it with an equivalent point load. So in this case, that orange UDL is going to be replaced with a blue point load here of 17.5 kilonewtons. Now we need to know the distance of that 17.5 kilonewtons from the support. We've already said that that UDL section is 3.5 meters long and the weight of an object acts in the center. So this distance here is going to have to be 1.75 meters or half of three and a half meters. So we've done two things there. We've determined the magnitude of the force, five kilonewtons per meter times the three and a half meter length. And we've also determined the position of the point load that's being used to replace the UDL. Now what I would normally do is encourage you to remove the UDL from the diagram. So you could either cross out the UDL because it's been replaced with the point load, or what I'm going to do in this instance is remove that from the diagram entirely. And the reason we're able to do that is because that point load is equivalent to the UDL that we've removed from the diagram. Now once we've done that, everything else is the same as before. We start with our first condition for static equilibrium that states that the sum of the clockwise moments equals the sum of the anti-clockwise moments. And we specify that that's about A, or the left-hand support. We then take moments about that point, and we can see that the 12.5 kilonewton force is going to cause a clockwise moment. The 17.5 kilonewton force is going to cause a clockwise moment, and the 6.8 kilonewton force is also going to cause a clockwise moment. All of that is going to be balanced by the anti clockwise moment, which is being caused by RB. We can then set up our equation. We have 12.5 kilonewtons at a distance of 1.5 meters. That's that first force taken care of. The second force that we need to account for is the 17.5 kilonewtons that's replaced our UDL. And the distance between that and the pivot at A is just going to be 1.5 plus 1.75, which is 3.25 meters. This distance here is 3.25 meters. And we have one more force causing a clockwise moment, 6.8 kilonewtons. Now the distance of this back to the pivot is 1.5 meters plus 3.5 meters, which is 5 meters. And that's going to equal our anti-clockwise moment, which is RB. And the distance of RB back to the pivot is going to be 5.5 meters. We've got 1.5 plus 3.5 is 5. 
plus an additional half a meter. That beam is 5.5 meters long. Next, we can simplify the left-hand side, 12.5 times 1.5, plus 17.5 times 3.25, plus 6.8 times 5, equals 109.625. And the next step to get our B on its own is to divide each side of that equation by 5.5. So we'll be left with RB, the support reaction on the right hand side of the beam, equals 109.625 divided by 5.5, which equals 19.9 to one decimal place. And we know that's kilonewtons because all of our forces on the beam are in kilonewtons. Next we're going to apply our second condition for static equilibrium, which states that the sum of the forces acting downwards equals the sum of the forces acting upwards and our forces acting downwards is 12.5 kilonewtons plus the 17.5 kilonewton force which replaced the UDL plus the 6.8 kilonewton force and all of that is going to be balanced by RA which we don't yet know plus RB which we've already determined to be 19.9 kilonewtons. We can then simplify the left-hand side of our equation. So 12.5 plus 17.5 plus 6.8 equals 36.8 kilonewtons. And that equals RA plus 19.9. Now this time our operation to get RA on its own is to subtract 19.9 from each side. When we do that, we'll be left with RA equals... 36.8 minus 19.9, which equals 16.9 kilonewtons. So once again, we've used our first condition to find RB, and we've found RB to be 19.9 kilonewtons. We've then used our second condition to find the support reaction at A, and we've found that RA equals 16.9 kilonewtons. Therefore, we have determined the support reactions at both the left-hand side and right-hand side of the beam.